Hello, my name is Dr. Jenny Johnson and I have a PhD in nursing from Loyola University in Chicago. What I'm going to talk to you about in the next 10 or 15 minutes on this video is translating the 2013 new cholesterol guidelines into language for the patient. It's more easier for you to understand. Get rid of the medical jargon, simplify it. My goal is not to take the place of your doctor or your healthcare practitioner. It's just to help spend a little more time explaining it so that when you meet with them, you're going to be prepared or you'll understand how these new guidelines changed. Because it's a little confusing even for healthcare practitioners as well. A little bit about my background. I spent the first half of my career taking care of patients who had heart attacks. And the second half, I've been working with people, coaching and counseling them through healthier lifestyles, quitting smoking, losing weight, whatever it might be, understanding their cholesterol and their blood pressure numbers. I have a bit of a different approach in lifestyle changes. I believe that the best diet is the one that you don't know you're on. And so my changes are designed to not dramatically change your quality of life, but really help you with things that you can stick with and be successful with. So I'll talk more about that later. Okay, so first off, why did the guidelines change? Well, the American Heart Association developed a program that's been around for about 10 years now called Get With The Guidelines. And it was designed to help doctors and nurse practitioners and physicians assistants and nurses, all of us taking care of patients who had a heart attack, help them get out of the hospital on the right medications and lifestyle changes and that sort of thing so that they don't have a second heart attack. That was the goal. And there's been a great deal of data from that program that has accumulated. And it's really changed how we approach treating people who are at risk for a heart attack. One study that I looked at, and this was some of the this is examples of the types of studies that have been emerging. So they looked at 139,000 people who had heart attacks between 2000 and 2006. They took the data from 151 hospitals across the country, and they found that half of those people that had heart attacks had LDL bad cholesterol numbers less than 100. Half. That shocked everybody. And remember, total cholesterol is made up of the good cholesterol, which is the HDL, and lots and lots of that. They're garbage collectors that get rid of the bad garbage. And the LDL is the lousy bad cholesterol, and the VLDL is the very lousy cholesterol. And they make up the total, those three things. And LDL is bad because that's what gets caught inside the walls of the arteries. Your arteries should be nice and smooth, but risk factors such as high blood pressure, smoking, high cholesterol, high blood sugar, cause wear and tear on the linings of the arteries. And then it's easy for that LDL traveling through the blood to get caught in those rougher patches, if you will, and it migrates inside the wall and gets stuck. And then the body mounts this war to get rid of it, sends white blood cells to that area. Inflammation is what this is called. It can't get rid of it. It's stuck. And more and more LDL is attracted to that area, and that's plaque. Another name for this is called plaque. And wherever that plaque is, that wall is weaker and more vulnerable to rupture or tearing, and that's what causes a heart attack. And whenever there's that tiny bleed, platelets go to that area to plug it up and stop the bleeding, and it just as it would if there was a bleeding anywhere else. And before you know it, that artery, which is spaghetti-sized to begin with, gets completely blocked. If you can drop the LDL cholesterol dramatically, it can't move into that area. It can't get worse, and it actually starts to heal. So that fibrous cap forms, and it protects the artery from rupturing or tearing, and that's a really important thing. But you have to really drop the LDL cholesterol to get that benefit. So the guideline writers, these are cardiologists and specialists that they spend their time treating cholesterol, they're experts in their field. They looked at the research within the last 10 years and they felt that we needed to make some changes in our approach to patients to um, not worry so much about the number but treat the risk, risk category. I'll explain that in just a minute. So if you're somebody that has um, that falls into one of these four risk groups you're somebody whose LDL cholesterol needs to come down by half. So the guideline identified, writers identified four groups. The first group are people that have already had a heart attack and stroke, which makes sense. If you've already had one event, you're at much greater risk for having a second event. 
And your LDL, wherever you started at the beginning of that event, your baseline number needs to come down by half. So let's say you started with a, you normally have a, a LDL cluster of 100, but you had a heart attack with that LDL of 100. It needs to come down to 50. 40 seems to be the lowest number that the guidelines writers wanted to see LDL cholesterol reach and on two different blood tests. So let's say your LDL was 200. Cutting that by half brings it down to 100. So wherever your baseline was, you need to reduce it by half to prevent you from having a second heart attack or stroke. The second group are people that have LDL cholesterols greater than 190. These are people who haven't had a heart attack or stroke yet, but they have really high LDL cholesterol. They have inherited a liver from mom or dad that just makes too much. And the statin drugs, which is the treatment that they are recommending here for all these to get that LDL down by half, they block an enzyme that the liver needs in order to make cholesterol. So it works really, really well. The third group are diabetics. Di diabetes, that extra sugar traveling through your blood, literally scratches the artery wall. If you add that scratching effect causing rough patches within the inside lining of the arteries along with elevated LDL or higher LDL or even too much LDL anyway, um, it just makes the process develop that much quicker. So they, that's a recommendation to drop that by a half as well. And the fourth group are people who haven't had heart attacks or stroke. They're not diabetics, but they have many, many risk factors. And the guideline writers actually developed a tool called the Heart Attack Risk Calculator that you can calculate whether you have enough risk factors similar to those people that already had heart attacks and stroke that you need to be treated a little more aggressively with a stronger statin drug. And you can have information at the end of this video on where to go and calculate your risk. And basically what they're going to ask you, they don't want any identifiable information, you don't even have to give an email address, but they'll ask you your total cholesterol, your HDL, your LDL, whether or not your triglycerides are above 150, whether or not you're a diabetic, your blood pressure, um, let's see what your height and weight and your uh, waist circumference, your family history, your personal history, and they put all that data into this computer program and it gives you a percentage score. I'm not so interested in teaching you all the nuances of that number, just know that if it's above 7.5%, you are at higher risk. You've got enough risk factors that you're at risk for heart attack. So the risk calculator score just means what's the likelihood of you having a heart attack or stroke in the next 10 years? And it's not an absolute, of course, but it's just telling you when you look at other people who've had heart attack and strokes, you've got enough risk factors that are similar to them. And uh, gender and age are on the other two things that I forgot to mention that they'll ask you to provide information about. So compared to other men and women of your age range, you're getting, you may be getting into trouble. So people with 7.5% or higher need to cut their LDL cholesterol with a statin drug by half. If you score between 5% and 7.5%, you need to drop, drop your cholesterol, your LDL bad cholesterol by 30 to 50%. And if you're less than 5%, you can drop it by 30%. But again, in this group, in this fourth group, this is where the art of medicine really kicks in and you need to work with your healthcare practitioner who know you better than I certainly do or the guideline writers do. You may be somebody, for instance, who has a low percentage risk score, but your doctor knows more about you, and he or she is concerned that you need to be treated more aggressively. So those are this is just general guidelines for the general public and to kind of give you an idea of a starting point to have a discussion with your physician. They also placed a very high um, support for lifestyle changes, and the lifestyle changes they're recommending are exercise, watching your weight, quitting smoking and eating that heart healthy diet. Um, that heart, the, for most, and I help people with those different risk factors and you can go to my website if you need more information. For the heart healthy eating, again, I do a lot of, I spend a lot of time helping people stabilize their blood sugars with, and you know, come up with an eating plan that can fit into their everyday life. But basically it's a diet of more fruits and vegetables, whole, whole grain, brain, grains, beans, rice, lean meat the size of a deck of cards, no more than twice a day, and adding fish a couple of times a week. 
reducing your saturated fats, which are fats that are solid at room temperature, um, eating, drinking skim milk as opposed to whole milk, low fat dairy, that kind of thing, reducing your trans fats, which are in a lot of processed foods, um, cutting back as much of that as you can, watching your portions for weight control, keeping your weight under control, reducing your salt intake, avoiding processed foods as much as possible, desserts and sugary drinks, cutting back on that as well. So basically that's the diet. I like the Mediterranean plan for eating, which is helpful for patients too. If you want more information on my services and how I can help, you can go to my website, which is www.living4ahealthyheart.com or email me at jjohnson at living4ahealthyheart.com or you can call me at 630-800-7308. I hope you've enjoyed this information. It's helped you. If you have additional questions, please contact me. And remember, Franklin's words, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. God bless and have a great day. Bye-bye.